but we're gonna test out the Nespresso. She wants a coffee machine, so. <laughs> I'll see this massive sand bank all the way through here. Mrs. is here from Switzerland. So, giving her a look at the Aussie lifestyle. Is this. So today I want to talk about the power system um, in the F truck and why I pulled out the old one. This is the new one. I did a quick little run over when I did the, the rundown on the whole new tray and canopy setup. Um, so to short. Um, give an explanation on why I pulled the whole other system out. It's just because it wasn't keeping up with my demands. With the 2600 watt inverter now, I can do some stuff like induction. There was some times out the desert where it was bloody windy as all hell and um, it would have been nice to have induction. We parked up at Fink and we were consuming a lot of power. We were um, using a toaster and stuff. I was charging all my camera gear every day. And we had the travel buddy running. So I was, I was chasing power and because I was sitting and we're not charging, it was kind of hard to, uh, to keep the 200 amp lithium going. So I wanted to get into a whole new MITS fitted installed system um, from those guys when we got the new setup done. So everything just fit seamlessly. It was all integrated, it's all engineered, it's all built to go into the canopy. So that's kind of why I've I've used a lot of stuff from the old setup, like I use my old uh, DC to DC, I use my old 240, um, I use my other 200 amp lithium, so I have used a lot of the components, the switching and everything. Um, basically all I've added is a DC to DC, and so I've got running two of them, two DC to DCs, 240 amps, so I run about 80 amps into the battery while I'm driving, and we've added another 200 amp uh, lithium, but really couldn't afford to just go and outlay um, all this money on a whole new setup, so definitely used what I had to integrate into this bigger system that I now have. So how much battery power I've got? I've got 400 amps of lithium, the BTEC um, batteries from Anadrive. So I'm running two of them, they're just wired up together. Um, so a total of 400 amps, got two DC to DCs. So I've got the main one feeding from the solar. Um, I'm trying to think how Dan wired them up down there at MITS 4x4, but um, I think one's consuming solar partly or something like that, and the other one is purely car related. So anyway, he's configured it so it's getting the maximum amount of uh, uh, current it can into the system. So we're doing that. Still running the same 240 charger I had in the old system. So we've got the Enerdrive um, 240 charger up there as well. So, but now I can just, I can charge faster with more amps going in um, and driving less during the day. So I've got the solar pumping in and I've also got the, uh, the current coming from the alternator. So I have put a new alternator on the truck. I didn't up, upgrade the alternator or anything. I may look at doing that in the future. I can't remember what the standard one is off the top of my head, um, but it, it does pump a good amount of amps in anyway. So don't really need the upgrade, but I could upgrade the alternator to a bigger one. Alright, uh, first test with the new inverter, the new power system. I um, already run the induction on a trip that I did up to Point Palmer the other weekend with the boys. But we're going to test out the Nespresso. She wants a coffee machine. So, <laughs> I'll see if it works. Oh, the surgeon. Let's see what it's drawing. Oh yep, so we're 106, 107 amps, it's peaking up to, 106 there. Wasn't enough apparently, so we'll go again. <laughs> So it's handling it, no worries. It's pulling 97 this time, and it drops off. So on the new system, 
I have been running a toaster um, of a morning. It's just awesome to have just good toast that's not burnt and charcoal from being on the fire and stuff. But if I can always have a fire, I'll always choose to cook on the fire. But just to have toast is pretty sick. So, and I've also got the induction, which I'll show you now. So on this side of the truck, I've got my induction cooktops. I bought these ones just off eBay. Um, I've used them a couple of times so far. They seem to work pretty good. They come as a whole set, but I just took the other bigger, bigger stuff out. I didn't need and put that in the house and just using this pot and pan for the induction cooking. So in this one, I've got um, my drifter fire pit and stuff like that in this thing, but I bought this, I can't remember what drifter used this bag for, um, but it's nice and flat. Be good if it had a, um, a little liner on the inside of it, but I'll open it up. And I've got my induction cooktop in here. So I bought the the Westinghouse, um, the Westinghouse one. So it's pretty good. It's got your timer, temp, your up and down buttons, your power, and you can choose how much power you want it to draw. So you can either pull it down or push it up, however much you're looking to use. So that's the induction cook, cooktop that I've been using. So there's the, I think there's a serial number and stuff if you want to look that up, if you want to get the same one. So just looked up the specs on this Nespresso Mini or whatever it is from DeLonghi. It uses um, 1,150 watts. So we have the 26 watt, 2,600 watt inverter in the truck. So runs it no worries at all and keeps her happy. Bloody, bloody coffee machine. This is, this is ridiculous. So, this is a bit messy here with all me, all me charging cables coming down, but just having this aluminium box around everything just helps protect the whole setup from anything in the canopy that's shifting. Like if this, if this chair was to fly and smack against anything, it's not cutting anything off on me or anything like that. It's all protected, all the wires are protected, so it's, it's really good. Um, I do have a couple more Andersons under here. Got one here and you might be able to see the other one up the other end. So there's Andersons there. That one powers the fridge. This one is powering the travel buddy, this Anderson socket here. So that runs up into the other side up in there. So that's power on travel buddy. And then in the back here, I do have two more sockets just here as well, which I'll pull this, pull this chair out. So, Got another Anderson just here for any other Anderson accessory that I want to use down here in the back. So that's 50 amps coming from that. And then got the just the 12 volt SIG socket because you always find some weird accessories and stuff that have a SIG socket and it's just handy just to have another one back here, I suppose. A couple of USBs, don't know how often I'm going to use this, but it's always just handy to have an extra power outlet on this end instead of running cables across. So that's why I opted just to put this little panel in there as well. So I can also, from this panel, I can charge the, um, run the uh, charger to my companion shower. So I'm gonna do a review on this little sucker too. It's a really good little shower. Um, so I can also charge it from here, which is handy as well. Um, and with a big power system like this, I'd highly suggest to always have a fire extinguisher. So I've got a fire extinguisher in the canopy and I've also got one in the truck as well in case anything in case anything very very shitty happens so that's a little rundown on this side of the power setup and and what i've done but the boys at mitts 4x4 outfitters fitted all this for me so when the tray and the canopy was getting done they installed all this before the boys at mitts put all my drawers and shelves and everything in so it's just if you don't have the budget to do it definitely just do your own sort of setup if you don't have the budget for it but if you do have the budget for it and you're going to do it anyway i'd suggest just to go with the mitts boys to put all this in as their factory setup it's just the the best way to go so that's what i'd do anyway and if anything should go wrong it's it's way easy for those boys to diagnose anything electrical or anything like that um because they installed it they know everything runs they run their systems 
pretty much all the same if you're buying one of those tandem systems but you can opt for bigger systems like this if you want one um, they can do a full custom system for you um, as well which is basically what this is this is a custom system but um, they do they've been doing a lot of caravans and stuff as well lately so with big systems like this 400 amps 2600 watt inverters two dc to dcs and about 2600 gazillion solar panels on the roof of some of these caravans is ridiculous so yeah they can do a custom system if you want one so i think in total i have like <laughs> i think it's like 16 usb outlets so i do have this bank here that i use um, for all my camera gear which i stick up here behind the shower so i shovel out there i've got my little ryobi battery up in here um, we do have our plugs just up there in the roof um, also got a sig socket up there in the roof so usbs sig sockets i've got more of these which these run off the 240 um, uh, extension board that i put in here so right now i'm charging um, so that is for the um, charger on the ryobi that's what that one there is this one is for the power bank here the usb power bank and then this one is charging my uh, shark shield um, for diving and stuff, which is up for swimming and that. It's up in there. Um, so let me know if you want me to do a video on that. That's a shark shield, a thing I just bought just for um, swimming, um, spear fishing, all the rest of it. Because I do want to start doing a bit more spear fishing like I did when I was younger. And start going out around the rocks and stuff and start catching some, some stuff. So... That's what is powered at the moment. I do have two more ports here as well. So I will run one port into the rooftop tent for winter when I want to run the electric blanket. Um, so I'll run another cable up there, just plug it in when we pull up um, for that. And then I'll have another extra one here open. This cord here runs across to the other side to provide um, 240 power to the kitchen. So that way I can plug in the coffee machine, the induction cooktop, the and also the toaster and other, whatever, other 240 appliances I want to power on that side. Um, so that's what it does. So, e power, 2600 watt from Enerdrive. You can see the two DC to DCs up in there, and then on the far left side, you can see the 240 charger as well. All the switching and stuff's up there. All the breakers are up in here along the top there, so I can easily get to them if they trip. But it's even the attention to detail around the batteries and stuff. Like, MITs make these little battery trays and stuff. Um, as well that you can get from those guys so um, it's just the battery secure it can't hit anything it can't move it's in its own tray all the little dig worlds there so it's really really good so coming around to the passenger side of the truck now um, obviously got the big fridge here so the 240 charger and everything's tucked in behind this panel here and then i can take this one off to get to the switching panel if need be um, so I can just unscrew this panel here and this whole section here comes off so I've got another 12 volt SIG socket on this side so I've got outlets for days this one here I just run a phone charger stick my phone up here on my mob armor mount to charge it and then this other cord here runs over and powers little sound speaker that I have on the side of the fridge there so which is cool this is still all my old box and everything I had in the last setup, if you've seen that. And we just uh, powder coated, the boys powder coated it and made it all new and flashy. So, got another SIG socket down there. So, <laughs> Dan's put SIG sockets everywhere. Um, so, these are all my outlets. I do have to, I'm waiting on the um, switch lights to, uh, to show up because these are um, actually not what they say they are anymore they're all changed so it's kind of confusing for me at the moment but um because this was from my last system when i had someone else install my power system so i've got to get new labels but looking at this um i love having this like right here too it's it's near the kitchen it's near wherever you think you're using all the time so you can constantly just had a glance see what your, your power is doing which is good so let's have a flick through so DC to DC solar right now with the rooftop tent. We're running close to 10 amps coming in and then 400 amps of the uh, lithium. So 3.4, 2.9. The, the fridge I'm pretty sure is hooked onto the other circuit that has the travel buddy. So we are running the travel buddy at the moment as well. So Miss has made some little things for the kids. 
so that's what's in there so that's also running at the moment so i'm pretty sure that runs off the same circuit as the fridge that's where the uh the amps are coming from i'm pretty sure all the anderson sockets from memory so the one on the other side the one on this side and the one at the back run on the same circuit um for the uh to figure out the amperage so got the uh the sensors in the water tank so i've got 100 percent full of water 60 liters underneath the truck um and this is new so on the side marine we've got the new pitch and roll thing so that's pretty cool and then your barograph this is all the standard stuff that's in there you can add heaps of different screens to the side marine i do like this system it is very complicated to set up but um it's a bit bit over my head and a bit in depth on how to use the sensors and all the rest of it but you can add so many things into this thing so as long as um yeah get your whoever installs your system just to make sure that this is set up correctly for the right battery profiles and everything so you don't have any dramas but still is pretty in depth the Simarine marine screen not so much functionality of using it but just setting it up is is pretty pretty complicated so if they could simplify that it would be good and i suppose the last thing would be the central locking is part of the power system in the canopy i guess and also the core lighting which is all installed by the boys at mitts as well it's 4x4 outfitters so yeah that's pretty much it but this all controls everything i've got power to the rooftop tent as well um cabin lights on the back um kitchen lights all the rest of it so i'm pretty pretty stoked with the new setup so that's the new power system in the f truck if you've got any questions just drop it below um, check out my website www.ftech.com.au um, jump on there got a heap of gear on there um, but if you've got any questions about the power install or anything else electrical on the truck those lights are friggin sick um, the sentinels been running there for about six months now so i might do a review uh, an update review on those things and how they're going but i'll say now they are the best lights i have ever used so they're friggin going sick but anyway guys i'll catch you in the next one there Plenty of people out today. Yeah, like all the sand. It's normally, it's normally way farther through here. But yeah, it's all out there at the moment. Coming through this morning, heaps of people bogged along the edge up there. But good day for it. The beach is flogged. Like, no joke. I can't believe how much sand we've lost over the past month, two months with the swells and everything that's been smashing this. Like, it's ridiculous you go down that end down there and like there's there's already cars bogged and stuff just because they're trying to go down around where the where the tide's been coming up and they're getting stuck and everything and the embankment down the other end is ridiculous so you can only just i can only just fit the f truck down there uh, at the moment but top spot